you play Pokemon. Maybe you're a newcomer and maybe you just started dipping your toes into the Pokemon franchise, or maybe you're a lifelong player that's been playing since the first ones came out. Regardless what kind of player you are, how many games you've played, it doesn't matter. You have heard one of these Pokemon battle themes. But have you ever noticed anything about those clips that I just played? They all share a wildly similar music structure. So what if I told you that there's a secret formula behind those tracks that make every Pokemon battle intense, yet familiar? And at the end of this video, I'm gonna be using that formula to compose my own Pokemon battle theme. So let's break these down. So first up, we all know this. And then it goes into something like this. And then it probably goes into something like this. Amazing, it's so good. Most Pokemon battle themes follow this classic sort of A, B, C sort of format, or if you wanna call it verse, chorus, verse, chorus, whatever it is. First chorus, bridge, outro, and then it reloops, which is really, really good for keeping the energy high and the engagement in the battle. The intro, which is that sort of chaotic, chromatic, descending thing. Right, that everybody's so familiar with. This part is usually really, really short, but it sets the tone for the rest of the battle. It sort of slaps you in the face and says, yo, like, you're in battle. The next part after the intro is subscribing and hitting that notification bell. <laughs> the next part is usually the verse, if you want to call it a verse. It's the first section that the melody kind of introduces the main theme, so it sort of gives you that, like, um... <laughs> That's sort of that thing that starts building up into the main theme, right? And that's like where the rhythm starts, the driving beat sort of starts, and it builds the tension to the most important part of the song, arguably, which is the chorus. The chorus is the energetic and the memorable part of the song. That's kind of the one that you listen to and you go, oh yeah, like that's, that's Pokemon. In that case, it would be this. <laughs> shitty but whatever and then following the chorus is usually something that I would just call it a bridge because it's something different that totally contrasts the rest of the sections and it provides a break from the repetitive structure so it just kind of gives your ears something to be like oh like this is different kind of builds you back up into this next looping section I'm using the theme from gen 4 right now so in that case it would be this <laughs> keeps doing that until the end of eternity and then it breaks away and does and then finally comes the outro well to be clear none of these really have an outro so to speak it's more so a closing or like a transitional part that kind of leads its way back into the verse or the chorus and in pokemon gen 4 it would be something like this and then it goes right back into you get the idea so why is that? So imagine this, right? Like you're playing Pokemon and you go use the bathroom, you go eat some food, you leave your DS or your Game Boy on the counter, you come back to it a half hour, an hour later, if that's what you did, that's what I did, and the music is stopped. Or even worse than that, it restarts. <laughs> it would be super weird. So just by the nature of the song, it can't have an ending. It has to continuously loop for endless playability. By the way, this looping thing is the case for nearly every song in any video game. So let's use an example from the original games from Pokemon Red and Blue. So you notice how the intro immediately grabs your attention with its kind of energetic and traumatic chaos that introduces the battle cutscene. And as the verse kicks in, the melody starts to build up tension. And this exact structure stays true for every Pokemon game, except for one. So which one do you think it is and why? Just start writing it in the comments right now. Even if you don't comment it yet, just write it down just so you have it. So now check out this theme from Pokemon Sword and Shield. I know it obviously wasn't the most popular Pokemon game. I get it. I wasn't a fan of it either. But even though it's from a different generation and sort of the gameplay is a little bit different, you can still hear that same structure. 
the intro creates anticipation. The verse establishes the theme. And the chorus delivers that explosive sort of energy that, that you're looking forward to when you hear a Pokemon battle. And obviously the bridge adds a fresh twist before the final either chorus or re-looping back to the verse, whatever it is. So why does the structure work so well? Well, it, it's all about maintaining excitement and keeping the players engaged, right? So that heavy intro is meant to slap you in the face and be like, yo, you're in battle. And then the verse and the choruses, they're meant to sort of build up that anticipation into the main battle theme, right? Like that verse gets you excited to hear the chorus. And once you hear the chorus, you're like, oh yes, I'm in it. And then it re-loops everything back. So it's this constant like anticipation loop. And another thing too, is that this typical formula ensures that there's a familiar pattern which is typical in songwriting in general, not just video game themes. And the bridge sort of adds variation and keeps things fresh and dynamic within each one of these different generations. So now getting back to my claim before about one of the Pokemon games not having one of these sort of chaotic intros. Did you think about which one it was? It's Pokemon Legends Arceus and sort of Scarlet and Violet. So yes, this is my actual gameplay from Legends Arceus. Yes, I completed the decks. Yes, it was one of, if not, the best Pokemon games I've ever played. So the question is, if the Pokemon battle theme structure was so successful, why did they not utilize it in these games? The answer is honestly pretty simple. With this new open world format and quick battle interactions that the Pokemon company is now leaning towards, the music won't exactly fit. So in Legends Arceus specifically, there are no animations or cutscenes that lead you into a battle, which was very prominent in every single Pokemon game before it. They just sort of did away with it. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, you kind of just throw your Pokeball at the Pokemon you're trying to target and boom, you're in battle. There's no cutscenes, there's none of that. You're just immediately in a fight. There's a saying in music by Miles Davis that goes, it's not the notes you play, it's the notes you don't play. And I feel like this rings true because honestly, it doesn't need that chaotic intro. So I think they made a good choice by going with the simpler route, which is just sort of a testament to how thoughtful the composers of these games are. So now let's talk about Scarlet and Violet. So as you can see with both of these games, there is an intro. There is something that kind of smacks you and goes, hey, you're fighting, but it's not to the level of chaos that the other ones are. So here's an interesting thought. So since Pokemon is slowly moving away from these traditional battle scenes and sort of transitioning into this faster paced style of fighting, do you think that the Pokemon company will do away with the traditional chromatic chaotic intros that they've utilized in the past? Or perhaps do you think they're gonna sort of utilize this structure in battles that do require a cutscene? For instance, champion battles or legendary battles, etc. In case you guys don't know, Volo's theme was basically the same as champion Cynthia's theme. So now that we have a general idea of the Pokemon battle theme structure, let's compose a battle theme. All right, so we have our Pro Tools session open, so we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into it. The first thing is, if you look at the battle themes from Gen 4, and actually a lot of gems before, but, but we're gonna look at Gen 4 in particular right now. It starts with the sort of... It starts with the sort of like chromatic descending thing. So if we go back into Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, the intro starts with this crazy descending chromatic thing. Where it constantly walks down in half steps while trilling up a half step, if that makes sense. So it's got this chromatic descending. If you play that really fast, you'll get something like this. So immediately you can see that there's a couple of different ways that Pokemon likes to start these battle scenes, right? So you have this sort of like chromatic descending thing, and then you have whatever that might be. So, so let's kind of build our own. We're gonna create a similar structure to it. We're gonna start on a D. So instead of doing that chromatic walking down first, we're just gonna jump right into the main. 
and I'm gonna layer it with something else to give it a little bit of a different feel. So here we have the Pro Tools session open. I got 180 BPM. That's generally about what the other Pokemon themes were. Some of them range, but generally 180. So we stuck with it. And I plugged in the drums from Diamond and Pearl just to give it some familiarity because I don't want to recreate a whole new orchestral drum set just for the sake of it. But I just want to give you guys an example. And there's our intro. You can see that I have all the other parts listed because this is a template from the other Pokemon theme that I did. We're going to um, add another piece on top of it just to give it some dynamic and give it something different for your ears to listen to instead of just that chromatic descending thing. So we'll do this. That actually sounds kind of cool. I don't know. Maybe we'll do the higher octave. Maybe we'll see how the higher octave sounds. It's kind of fire. Cool. So after the intro, what comes next? The verse. The verse is going to be that part that adds the rhythm section to it and kind of like gives you that pace to follow in order to build you up into the chorus. In Gen 4, it sounds like this. And then it goes into the main chorus. So for our sake, we're going to come up with a verse, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. There we go. After the verse, it goes into the chorus, which is the main melody. And I wrote this a couple of weeks ago, and I just thought it was really cool. I kind of had this idea for a champion theme, and it wasn't exactly a, a battle theme, so to speak. It was definitely a little bit more intense than that, so we'll call it, like, a rival theme or something like that. They're all very similar, but they all have their own unique touch to create a little bit more suspense or intimidation. The one that I wrote goes a little something like this. And then it goes into this higher part, which is the second part of the verse. Kind of fire. I wish I did that on recording. Fuck. Let's get into that second section. There we go, we got it, that's fire. I can't wait to add the base. Once we add the base, this is gonna be like absolutely insane. If we look at a lot of the Pokemon generations before this, a lot of them do this sort of walking base thing. They have intense bass lines. So if we look at Gen 1 or Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, you'll see. And if you look at Gen 4, you'll get something like this. But we're gonna do a slight spin off of it and we're gonna make it our own unique thing. In this left hand for the base of the verse, we're gonna stick with this D major power, uh, D major, we're gonna stick with this D power chord. And we're gonna follow those notes because there's kind of a melody in there. And we gotta make sure it aligns with that E flat, so. We're gonna do something like that.
just for the sake of it. Okay, cool. So the next part is going to be the bridge. I never came up with the bridge section yet for this, so this is going to be the first. Here's what we're going to do for the bridge section. I figured it out. And we're gonna accompany that with some other parts too. So we finally got everything in place. We got the intro, verse, chorus, bridge, and then it's gonna re-loop. So let's set up this re-loop right now. It's gonna be right there. Again, just as a disclaimer, this was just a very rough draft. Obviously, if you were composing something for a video game, you wouldn't just do it with a synth patch on your keyboard. You would go and go in and compose the entire thing. So that takes many, many, many hours to do. But this is just something to give you an idea of the Pokemon formula, just to give your ears something to be like, oh, okay, that, that actually makes sense, just to compartmentalize some of the, these ideas. If you guys enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, Hit the notification bell because I got a bunch of cool stuff coming up and I'm going to be doing a bunch of video game themes and covers and things like that that are fully professionally produced. Not really like this. They're going to be a lot better. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys soon.